hello everyone this is mk sagar from sagar institute of research and technology bhopal so welcome you all in today's session in today's session we are uh, going to uh, study and discuss about the heat treatment process and uh, under the heat treatment process we will discuss about the classification of the heat treatment process and some critical temperatures uh, for the uh, heat treatment processes and uh, in the earlier sessions uh, we have covered the introduction part of the heat treatment process and uh, the what are the stages of the heat treatment process and also we have discussed about the cooling different cooling mediums for the heat treatment process so let us start today's session with the heat treatment process how the heat treatment processes are classified so this is the classification the heat treatment processes are classified into two categories namely one is uh, bulk heat treatment process and uh, another one is our surface heat treatment process so these are the broad categories uh, in which the heat treatment processes are classified so what is bulk heat treatment process the bulk heat treatment processes are carried out for getting the desirable conditions in the whole alloy or metal and or component and this is the internal phenomenon it means uh, in this process the whole alloy or component is considered for the heat treatment process so such processes are known as bulk treatment process the second one is surface heat treatment process so these processes are carried out to improve the surface uh, properties not internal properties so we can say this this is the surface phenomenon so the surface heat treatment process is the surface phenomenon and the bulk heat treatment process is the internal phenomenon this is the difference between bulk heat treatment and surface heat treatment processes this is the <laughs> classification of the heat treatment process heat treatment process uh, classified into two categories one is bulk and the surface so under the bulk heat treatment process there are different four processes known as annealing bulk heat treatment process normalizing the bulk heat treatment process hardening is the bulk heat treatment process and tempering is the bulk heat treatment process and further the annealing process is uh, divided into sub categories that is known as uh, first stage full annealing or conventional annealing process or simply we can say annealing process under the annealing second sub annealing process that that is known as crystallization annealing and the third is stress stress relief annealing process and spherodization annealing process so these are the four sub categories under the annealing process and second is normalizing normalizing and third is hardening or also it is known as quenching and the next is tempering process under the tempering there are two processes mar tempering and the as tempering <laughs> so all these uh, four annealing type four processes under the annealing and two under the tempering so these all uh, processes are the bulk heat treatment processes and these process are applied to the uh, whole component or alloy right under these process the whole part of the component is considered for the heat treatment now the next uh, heat treatment is surface heat treatment process and under the surface heat treatment process there are two processes thermal surface heat treatment process and the next is thermochemical surface heat treatment process under the thermal process there are flame uh, heat, heat treatment process 
then induction uh, heat treatment process, laser heat treatment process, and electron beam heat treatment process. All are surface heat treatment process. Under the thermochemical, there, there are carburizing, nitriding, and cyriding. So these all are known as surface heat treatment process. And these heat treatment process, we will discuss one by one. First, we will cover the all bulk heat treatment process. And after over the bulk heat treatment process, we will discuss about the surface heat treatment process. And during the discussion, uh, we will compare all the process, one uh, the other process, how they, they differentiate uh, from each other and what are the advantages, what are the applications, all things we will discuss during the session. So this, this, was, this was the classification about the heat treatment process. Right, now this is the uh, heating temperature band for the different heat treatment process. In the previous session, we have discussed about the stages of the heat treatment process. And uh, uh, stages under the stages of heat treatment process, we have studied about the three different stages for the, those are must for any heat treatment process. First stage we have discussed about the uh, heating, then second stage is holding or soaking and third stage was cooling. So in the heating stage uh, we have discussed that heating stage means the required component or alloy that is heated uh, up to a definite or a certain temperature. And at that time, uh, I reminded you all. I reminded you all that during the particular heat treatment process, uh, we will discuss about the this uh, certain temperature or uh, definite temperature. So this diagram shows the certain temperature or definite temperature up to which the material required material or component will be heated up. So um, this is the uh, diagram taken from the FEC diagram, right? <clears throat> now you can see uh, this line represents the uh, eutectoid temperature temperature line because uh, this is the eutectic point at which the eutectoid reaction takes place. So the eutectoid point. Uh, this is eutectoid point at which the eutectoid reaction takes place and eutectoid reaction is only the reaction that is responsible for the heat treatment because uh, this reaction gives the transformation from solid to solid. Now you can see above the eutectoid point there is a austenite that exists in the uh, solid state and below the eutectoid point you can also see the phase uh, exists in the solid state. So here, uh, before the eutectoid reaction, the phase is solid. After the eutectoid reaction, the phase is solid. So heat treatment for this alloy is possible. And this alloy is known as the steel. Uh, at the eutectoid point, uh, the weight percentage of carbon is point uh, the unit. And the, norm, uh, the eutectoid point temperature, so that is T, that is equal to 700. 25 degrees Celsius. So heating temperature, uh, these lines show uh, about the heating temperature, what is the limit of the heating temperature. So this line, uh, namely A3, this line represents the annealing and normalizing both process. It means when uh, we apply the heat treatment process, uh, annealing type or normalizing type to any uh, component or alloy. So it indicates the we have to heat that component or uh, alloy up to this temperature. And we have to follow this uh, line. So this line represents the annealing and normalizing temperature limit. And on this side, uh, this line shows the normalizing temperature. If uh, we want to uh, go for normalizing treatment process, then we have to follow this temperature band. 
that is known as normalizing. And below the eutectoid line, this is the eutectoid, eutectoid temperature line. And below the eutectoid line temperature, the processes exists, uh, exists uh, known as histoidization annealing process, recrystallization annealing process, and stress relieving uh, heat treatment annealing process. So these are the subcategories of the annealing heat treatment process. So these three heat treatment, annealing heat treatment process takes place uh, below the eutectoid temperature. And the two processes, namely annealing and normalizing, these process takes place above the eutectoid temperature. So this uh, curve is very important to understand the uh, concept of uh, certain temperature, certain heating temperature up to a certain limit for the uh, different annealing processes and annealing and normalizing. Yes, now these are the uh, few definitions. Uh, ACM line is also the critical temperature line. And this line illustrates that solid solubility of carbon in the austenite decreases very rapidly from a maximum of 2.14% at a at this temperature 1148 degrees Celsius to a maximum of 0.76% at 727 degree Celsius due to greater stability of cementite at lower temperature. A1, A1 line, uh, this was the upper limit of the ferrite and cementite phase field. This is horizontal line going through the eutectoid point. A1 is the horizontal going through the eutectoid end. And lower critical temperature, that is point uh, A1. This is the temperature of the austenite to perlite eutectoid transformation. Below this temperature, austenite does not exist. And uh, in the previous diagram, we have seen that the austenite exists on, uh, up to the uh, eutectoid temperature line. These are the definitions uh, regarding the uh, critical temperatures. What are the critical temperatures? And what are the certain temperatures uh, up to which we have to uh, heat the component or alloy for the heat treatment process under the stage one. So first is upper critical temperature uh, that is denoted by A3. This term is denoted by the A3. This is the temperature below which the right starts to form as a result of ejection from Austenite in the hypo-eutectoid alloys. Second upper critical temperature that is ACM. And this is the temperature below which cementite starts to form as a result of ejection from austenite in the hyper-eutectoid alloy. Yes, uh, hypo-eutectoid and hyper-eutectoid alloys. Hyper eutectoid alloys are the alloys uh, in which the percentage of carbon from 0 to 0.8 percent and hyper eutectoid alloys the percentage of carbon varies from, from 0 0.2 to the 2 point percent. The next magnetic transformation temperature that is A2. This uh, temperature line is denoted by A2 and this is the temperature below which the alpha ferrite is ferromagnetic. So these are the uh, different uh, theoretical temperatures. And now, uh, part uh, uh, we have discussed about the theoretical temperatures and those are denoted by the A1, A2 and A3 term. Now, this is the iron carbon diagram, or uh, you have seen this diagram. Now, we have to uh, check uh, A2, curve A1, A2, A3, where these curves exist in the iron carbon diagram. So, you can see this line. Uh, this point is known as eutectoid point. 
this is the point at which the eutectoid reaction takes place and uh, this line the, that goes uh, from the eutectoid point this line is known as this is this line is denoted by a1 this is a1 here here it is made no, no, answer a1 and this line uh, joining from 900 degrees celsius to the eutectoid point right so this uh, this line is denoted by the um, a3 this is curve a3 and here is a2 a2 just above the ut a1 this is a2 about 50 to 60 degrees celsius above the uh, eutectoid temperature that is uh, 725 the curve a2 edges edges and uh, hypo eutectoid and hyper eutectoid you can see in this diagram uh, this is the bifurcation of hypo eutectoid steel and hyper eutectoid hypo eutectoid steel uh, exists uh, when the percentage of carbon varies from 0 to uh, 0.8 and hyper eutectoid steel ed exists uh, when the carbon uh, percentage uh, vary from 0.8 to 2 percent. These are known as hyper eutectoid and hyper eutectoid steel. So uh, during the heat treatment process, these uh, curves A1, A2, and A3 are very important to understand. So whenever we uh, will discuss about the particular heat treatment process, annealing and the uh, subcategories of uh, annealing process and normalizing the treatment process, we have to uh, heat the component or alloy up to these certain temperatures known as A1, A2, and A3. Okay, so thank you very much and uh, let us conclude the session what we have discussed in the today's session. We have discussed about the uh, classification of the heat treatment process in which we have discussed the bulk heat treatment process and uh, surface heat treatment process. And in bulk heat treatment process we have seen uh, annealing process, under annealing we have seen different annealing process, then normalizing, uh, quenching or my tempering and tempering and surface heat treatment process, there is thermal heat treatment process and another one is thermochemical heat treatment process. After that, uh, we have discussed, discussed about the uh, heating temperatures uh, for the heat treatment process. So what is the limit of uh, heat, heat, uh, heating temperature? Up to which temperature we have to uh, supply heat to the component or alloy under the stage one and uh, under the uh, then we have discussed about the some critical temperatures those are uh, denoted by the a1 a2 a3 curve on the uh, iron carbon diagram so thank you all of you uh, we meet soon in the next session thank you very much